Well, hello everyone and welcome to our first virtual fireside reading at the Grey Highlands Public Library. Just over three months ago, no one, myself included, would have imagined that our public libraries that are such busy community hubs and gathering spaces for culture, recreation, information and technology would suddenly become so empty. But even though the community is not here, and permitted to enter the physical spaces yet, almost every public library in Canada continues to play a strong and supportive role during this pandemic by providing virtual library services and programming to help bring our communities together until such time as we see people walking through our doors again. And this program today is just an example of that. Now, in the past, when we hosted fireside readings in cafes, the Friends of the Library have been here to support the program and provide refreshments and cookies and other treats. I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about. This is not happening today, but this might be a good time to pour a cup of coffee or tea and a treat from home. It is my privilege uh, to have Ron Pegg as our author today on the occasion of the launch of his most recent book. And we're going to hear more about that in just a few minutes. Ron is certainly not a stranger to Flesherton and the greater Grey Highlands community. But for those who do not know him, here's a little bit of information. He was born and raised in Beaton, Ontario. He graduated from Waterloo University College with a double major in history and English he received his Master's of Education degree from the University of Toronto. He's had a lifelong devotion to education of youth in Ontario, demonstrated mostly by his 34 years of teaching history in secondary schools in Alliston, Newmarket, and Grey Highland Secondary School here in Flesherton. But he was not just a teacher of academic topics. Ron has been an avid and dedicated sports coach, coaching over 200 sports teams, including hockey, baseball, basketball, track and field, soccer, resulting in several championships. As well, for over 20 years, he was the province-wide baseball manager, secretary for Ontario Baseball, and in 2017, he was inducted into the OBA Hall of Fame. Ron's volunteer contribution to this community has been immeasurable, serving on Split Rail Festival Committee, Grey Highland Secondary School reunions, memorial golf tournaments, Chris Neal events, special faith concerts and events, and many other special community celebrations. Ron is husband to Kathy of 55 years, very soon, father to Jamie, Rob, and Stacy, and he has 14 grandchildren whom I will not name at this time. <laughs> Above all, Ron is a man of faith and has 50 plus years as a lay minister in the Protestant church. Just last August, Ron and Kathy moved from Flesherton after 49 years to live in Mount Forest, another town not too far away. And today, Ron will be reading and talking about his most recent book, Faith is the Victory. Welcome, Ron. It's great to be here. Well, we're very happy to have you here. Um, before we move on to the reading, though, I do have just a couple of questions. So over the course of 19 years, um, you have written 11 books um, on quite a variety of topics, um, including your father, the former Premier of Alberta, Ernest Manning, Kate Aiken, a radio host, a local MP, Bill Murdoch, uh, Chris Neal, a former Ottawa Senator right-winger. They're all biographies, but rather an eclectic um, number of books. So what has inspired you to write about these particular people? Well, I think every person I wrote about uh, were people that I felt have contributed to society. <clears throat> there are people who uh, loved other people and showed it in different ways. 
And so I felt led to write the books about these people. Not everybody would agree with the contributions of these individuals, but for example, Kate Aiken was certainly Canada's woman of the 1900s, no question whatsoever. Uh, there's no question that Ernest Manning uh, was amongst the greatest uh, premiers that Canada's ever had. In, in the 1950s, the uh, Maclean's magazine had an article that said, the man who never loses, and he never did. Agree. Okay. Of the books you have written, do you have a favorite? Well, I think the correct answer to that is that every book that I'm writing while I'm writing it is my favorite. And uh, so they're, they're all there as, as part of it. Certainly I've got great feelings involved with the book on Christopher. Uh, like the book on Christopher has sold uh, almost more copies than any other biography of a hockey player in the last decade. And uh, Bill Murdoch, uh, character that he is, a, ma a maverick, but a man who was concerned about the people in his riding, so very much so concerned. And uh, working with Bill was a pleasure in itself. Right. I guess that question is almost like asking you which of your 14 grandchildren is your favorite. Because <laughs> yes, you do, that's, that's I can see how you do become <laughs> um, quite fond of what you're writing about, too. So, um, well, I'm going to turn the program over to you now so that you can talk about your new book, Faith is a Victory. And I know you've invited another well known member of our community to join us, uh, Don Dawson. Um, but before I do, I just want to mention on a personal note that Don and I have quite a bit in common. We're both married to a man named Paul, and it's not the same Paul, two different Pauls. <laughs> I want to make sure, just, just to verify that, uh, we both have um, four daughters. And I was going to say that we both had grand, uh, nine grandchildren, but actually she's ahead of me. But I expect at some point will catch up. She has 10 and we have I, nine. You may even pass her by. I, you never know. No. We're pleased to have Dawn with us this morning. Good to have you, Dawn. Thank you, Ron. Good to be here. It's always great to be in the Flesherton Library. Uh, through the years, we've watched the work of the library and been involved with it. And uh, we are so blessed by having the Gray Highland library system. It's one of the very best in Ontario without any question. And the work that they've been doing while the libraries have been closed is just outstanding. It's also a privilege to be part of a virtual fireside chat. Uh, usually, of course, many of you people or a number of you people would be present, but also many of you would have been present earlier in the spring when uh, the great events took place in the community center and uh, some outstanding authors from across the province have been brought in and very enjoyable but not possible this year. Now that's a negative. A positive for me is that eventually my children in uh, Texas, in California, in Saskatchewan will be able to see this, which they've never been able to see before. So th that's a very positive thing. The uh, books which we have given to the library uh, to sell at $20 each, and all the money, all every cent of it, will go to the library because the library has been able to raise funds this year. So. The, copies of the book of Christopher, which is the one of the largest selling uh, sports biographies of the last decade. And of course, Christopher is a Flesherton boy. And it was always so great to work with Bogner Bill. And uh, Mr. Murdoch is in fact a renegade, but a renegade for the people. And uh, Again, his book will be available. 
But my new book, Faith is the Victory, is a book which I have enjoyed very much writing and uh, with all the interruptions that have happened through the past year. And the book is, in fact, about my faith journey, which began as a small boy uh, when I accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior in my life. But there have been, of course, many ups and downs through the last 75 years. Most of them have been ups. But as you find out, as you live the life for Christ, you grow all the time. And even now, after 75 years, I find that I have many growing experiences. And Faith is the Victory is the book that tells you about this and, and the things that we have involved. And just in case anybody wonders, the picture on the front was when I was either 17 or 18 years of age. Anyways, we're also very, very pleased this morning to have Don Dawson with us. Don is a dear friend of my wife, a good friend of mine too, and she and her husband Paul both. And Don has done readings from my books before, and Don's going to read a couple of chapters from the book. Chapter 17, Clute Island Falls. It was an eight-hour trip to Cochrane. I made one stop to get gas. My mother had made me a lunch to eat along the way. It was supper, dinner time, when I arrived at the apartment of Alex and Ruth Taylor. They would be leaving after the two services the next day. Their apartment was to be my home for the next year. The Taylors were moving to Holstein, just outside of Mount Forest. Alex would be the student minister of a four-point charge. During the week, he was going to be attending Waterloo College to work on his Bachelor of Arts degree, on the road to becoming an ordained minister of the United Church. Yes, you read that correctly. He was going to be a student at Waterloo. It hit me like a ton of bricks. I had never even heard of this college a month ago. I was now having my third conversation about this school. This was very interesting. I was learning again that God works in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. He often uses other people to speak to each of us. The other news that Alex shared with me was not nearly as exciting. A 10-year-old boy was going to church camp near Timmins the next day. Alex had volunteered me to drive the 80 miles to the camp. I was not very impressed. I had just driven eight hours this day. I really did not need to drive close to another four hours the next day. Of course, I did not voice my feelings. After the two services were over on Sunday morning and the Taylors were on their way to southern Ontario, I drove this young boy to the camp. It was when we arrived at the camp that one of the most remarkable moments took place in my life. I helped the young man get registered and settled in. I became very aware of the excitement and noise of the camp. I suddenly came alive. For the first time in months, there was an excitement within me. This was the very first time I became aware that kids are my lifeblood. This is as true today as it was that day at the camp. What an awesome God we serve. As I was returning to my new home, it was quite a different person behind the wheel of the car than had driven the eight hours the day before and who had driven four hours more to the camp. God showed me 
that I would only be on this charge for the months of June, July, and August. I was going to return to school. I was going to Waterloo College to study to be a high school teacher. I would become a teacher at my former high school, Banting, in Alliston. I would join teachers like Miss Bembrook, Mrs. Mary Coulter, and Mr. Harold Pearson, who had spent their entire teaching careers in the Alliston area. All the above happened. I went to Waterloo that fall. I became a teacher and taught at Banting in Alliston. Obviously, as a young person, uh, you know, thinking that God was done speaking to me, but as we find out through life, he's never done speaking to you. And Alliston is not where I would spend my whole career by any means. In fact, my career school, of course, became uh, Gray Highland Secondary School, where we were for 24 years. And uh, it was really more my school than Banting ever was. But rather interesting counterfactor was Ken Engster was a graduate of uh, the Flesherton High School, and he went to Banting, and he would spend his career at Banting. And Ken and I became great friends. Me in his school, and he in my school. Anyways, God continues to deal with us regardless of what our age is. And uh, as we turn the back to dawn, we'll find out how God did continue to guide. This is chapter 20, year two at Waterloo. No one year in my life has more significance than my second year at Waterloo. I had decided to try out for the college hockey team. This would be a major commitment. I went to the first practice and discovered from the drills that I was probably the third fastest skater amongst the players. This was very encouraging since I had played most of my minor hockey as a goalie. I had not developed my skills as a forward. It was for the position of forward that I was trying out. After three weeks of practice, I found myself on what appeared to be the third or the fourth line. It was Thursday afternoon. We were scheduled to play our first exhibition game that next Tuesday night. Before this game, there was a practice scheduled for Sunday morning, after which the game roster would be posted. I could not attend the Sunday morning practice as I was scheduled to speak that Sunday morning at Letterbreen Church at a special youth service. I had a previous agreement with my roommate, Alex Taylor, to take their special service in one of his churches some months before this time. I was to go to Alex and Ruth's home on Saturday night. I explained my situation to the coach. He just said thanks for telling him. I went to Letter Breen and spoke. They gave me $15 cash. After lunch, I headed back to Waterloo. As I traveled, I came to realize that I had two problems. I did not know if my name would be on the list of players for Tuesday's game. I also had a money problem. It was the money problem that dominated my thoughts as I traveled. The $15 I had received was three times the amount of money that I had left in my wallet. On the other hand, I had an agreement with God that any money that I would receive would go directly back into his work. My thoughts wandered. One minute I was keeping the money, the next minute I was giving it to God. By the time I arrived in Waterloo, I had come to realize that I had to keep my agreement with God. The $15 was mailed to the National Bible Broadcast, 
the next day. The first place I went when I arrived in Waterloo was to the arena to see if my name was on the list. It wasn't. I was not scheduled to play in the game on Tuesday. On Tuesday morning, we got our results back from a Spanish test. Spanish was by far my most challenging subject. It, in my first year at the university, I spent more time on Spanish than on all the rest of my subjects put together. I still only got a C. We got the test back. I failed. This was, for me, a very major crisis. Why? It was because I could not let my dad and mom down. They had supported me when I returned from Bob Jones. They had supported me when I lasted only three months in Northern Ontario. For my dad and mother's sake, I could not fail. I never did return to the arena. My hockey tryout was over. I cut myself from the team. In reality, this was one of the most important decisions in my life. If I had continued to play hockey at college, I would not have been able to go home on weekends. I would not have been able to teach my Sunday school class. At least three of these girls have gone on to play major roles in community efforts and in churches. These women have been lifelong friends. Two of them still play a significant role in my life. I also would not have been able to coach and manage the Saturday morning hockey. Three boys out of this group went on to play in the NHL. Three others had great hockey careers at the university level. Several others have been successful in other fields of work. The friendships with this group that continue to this day are numerous. And then there is Spanish. In my second year at Waterloo, the college was moving from being associated with Western to becoming an independent school. As they were still associated with Western, there was a day in February that we had no classes to go to. The professors went to Western that day to help set our final exam. I told my mother about that day so she could be praying for the Spanish professors to set an exam that I could pass. We both prayed that day. When I opened my exam in April, I immediately closed my eyes in a prayer of gratitude when I read the exam. The exam could not have been more to my liking. I still only got a C, but I passed. And then there was the young woman that I had met at Teen Town. Our relationship existed, but it was spotty. I would have seen much less of her if I had been playing hockey. As it turned out, the boys' hockey tournament I was to coach in was in Alliston. She and her mother were at the arena most of the day helping. We won this regional tournament. The provincial tournament was at Base Borden, just a few miles from Kathy's home. She invited me to supper after our Friday afternoon game. It was my first visit to her home. After supper, she returned with me to the baseboard and arena to watch more hockey. After the game, I took her home. As I was going down the lane from her house, it suddenly hit me. I was really in love with this girl. All these things I have mentioned were based upon one decision. It was the decision to put God first. Amazing. It truly is. If you look closely, you can see a lifetime very much wrapped up with this decision. I am so glad 
that God gave me the problem of Spanish. Thank you, Don, very much for being here today. As, as, as you were reading, it was a great reminder to me. It almost brought tears to my eyes, actually, as I recalled how good God has been to me th through my life. And of course, he's good to any person, every person who calls upon him for guidance. So thank you so very, very much for being with us. God bless. Ron, I just want to thank you once again for coming today, and Don, for you coming as well to um, read um, these selections from Ron's new book, Faith is a Victory. And um, I feel that we really have, a, have had a, a virtual community gathering. And so, yes, thank you very much. I have one more question for you, Ron. I'm just wondering if there is another book percolating in your mind. Well, there are two or three books. And I'm, not I'm not surprised. <laughs> and in fact, uh, another one just popped up from our conversations today because Kathy at this time is doing a book for her son. Every week she gets a question uh, which she has to answer. And the question for this week is, uh, who are you more like, your mother or your father? And so she's got to answer that, and she will, and she's enjoying doing it. And so I think it's quite possible we can bring that into a, into a book. And that could quite readily be the next book. Well, we look forward to that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, now, normally, after we have an author reading, we have a table for a book signing, and people line up to purchase books but it is a little different this year. So if you're interested in purchasing um, Ron's new book, Faith is a Victory, or um, some of these other ones that we um, were talking briefly about um, this morning, uh, just call the library and um, we'll arrange for you to purchase your books. And it'll be much like curbside pickup, which many of you are familiar with. So. Thank you once again. Oh, I believe, Ron, you were going to uh, tell us a little bit about the cost for these books. Yeah, yeah. Uh, each of the books are $20, but if you get three of them, there'll be only $50. Three for $50, $20 a piece. All of the money is being donated to the library. The library this spring has been unable to do their usual things, which many of us enjoyed for many, many years. and. Uh, I think we always think of it as a donation to the library. And so uh, you can make a donation of $20 to the library and you'll get a book besides. Uh, by the way, uh, Wilda was in my very first grade 11 ancient medieval history course, uh, which in my very first year. And uh, we've been friends ever since. And it's been wonderful. That's right. Thank you, Ron. I do remember that history course as well, too. So, um, so it really has been um, just um, great to have you here again today. And the Great Highlands Public Library is so appreciative of your um, continued support for the library. One of our um, strongest supporters over the years for the library and all its services. So. Thank you everyone for um, being with us today and we look forward to more virtual fireside readings.